This morning on today's health, simple ways to heal yourself. If you want to ease the pain of a shot, lessen the, lessen the burning of your heartburn, maybe even stop your spouse from snoring, Dr. Carrie Peterson says you can do it all with just a few simple steps. She's a board certified internist and a Women's Health Magazine contributor. Dr. Peterson, good to see you. Good morning, Al. So, you know, we're getting ready for the flu season, and of course, people are going to be getting those flu shots. And, and I guess for some people, that shot, the shot itself can cause some problems. How do you lessen the pain for that? Yeah, so many of my patients get, are so afraid of getting vaccines, so here's a little trick. You take your two fingers, mm -hmm. you put them above and below where the needle's going to stick you, and you press very firmly. What it does is it stimulates the pressure receptors so that the pain receptors are sort of overridden and they're confused mm -hmm. so it doesn't feel as sharp. Good, it works. Good trick. Now, what, what about the, old, the the spank where people, you know, you just before you, you, know, <laughs> you know, they give you a little spank and then that you, works too. It mm -hmm. distracts you. You know, if you stimulate another area to create pain, you won't feel the original spot. It's like oh. rubbing your shin if you've got your shin banged. Uh, okay, well, very good. Now, okay, a lot of folks do this. They eat a big meal at night, which they shouldn't do to begin with, but no. they eat the big meal at night and then they get the burning sensation in their chest mm -hmm. without using, you know, any sort of drug over the counter or medicine or something like that. How can you relieve that sensation? A little tip, lie on your left side when you go to sleep at night. Why the left? When you have reflux, which is what causes the heartburn, the acid in the stomach goes into the esophagus and burns it. And the natural curvature of the esophagus is such that it goes down and curves to the left. So if you lie on your left side, it maintains that curvature and it prevents the acid from going up. Whereas if you go on your right side or mm -hmm. on your back, it straightens that curve. So and more, you get more up. acid reflux. That's right. All right. Yeah. Well, that, that's good. And, and you don't even have to take anything before that. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. If it, if it gets worse, you would have, obviously. Yes. All right. Snoring. Big problem. According to the National Sleep Foundation, snoring affects approximately 90 million American adults. Big problem for the people that snore and their spouses right. who can't sleep next to them. <laughs> so one thing to try, lie on your side when you that go to sleep. That doesn't matter which side? Either side. Uh -huh. When you lie on your back, what happens is the tongue, when, when you're sleeping, it relaxes and it slides to the back of the throat and it can obstruct the airway. This is actually very common in people who have obstructive sleep apnea and who are overweight. Mm -hmm. So if you lie on your side, the tongue can't fall backwards. Sometimes it's tricky when you're sleeping to stay on your side, so you may want to just wedge yourself between pillows mm -hmm. to maintain that position. Those aren't pillows! Uh, anyway. <laughs> 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 uh, but of course, uh, you said the operative thing, uh, it over, it, really if you want to do this, get rid of this, you want to lose some weight probably. That's, that's the optimal thing to do. Not always easy, but that would be the first choice. <laughs> oh, now here you want how do you pre prevent yourself from crying? Yeah, it's not always appropriate to cry on certain occasions, mm -hmm. so what you can try is purposefully clear your throat and then swallow. When you clear your throat, it interrupts the mechanism between the nasal passages and the throat that creates the crying. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you swallow, the tongue presses against the soft palate and it prevents you from crying. And not to mention it just distracts you mentally because you're focusing on something else. All right, that's kind of cool. Now, okay, hiccups. <laughs> you get them, it seems like you cannot get rid of them. What, what, what's, your, your, what's your solution? Well, first, what a hiccup is, it's when the diaphragm contracts involuntarily. Mm -hmm. And when it contracts, the vocal cords snap closed and it creates that characteristic kick sound. Mm -hmm. So here's a little tip. I know a lot of people think they have the solution, but this is a good one. Take a really, really deep breath, mm -hmm. hold it for 10 seconds, and then when you think you couldn't have gotten any more air in, take another breath, get a little more air in, hold it for five seconds, and then one more time, third breath in so that you're completely expanded for five seconds, and then you let it out. Or you've passed out. And, <laughs> <laughs> and what this does is it, it immobilizes the diaphragm, mm -hmm. which was contracting involuntarily, so it relaxes the spasms, and it also causes carbon dioxide levels to build up, and that terminates hiccups as well. The one I have used for 20 years, you, you need help with it, but you put a finger in each ear, and then you have somebody hold a glass, and you drink water as long as you can. It knocks them right out. Well, that sounds like a good right, one. I'm telling you, it, it looks silly, but it works. Uh, okay, ear popping. Mm -hmm. now, now, what causes that, and then how do you, you know, work, work that out? Well, what causes it, first off, the middle ear and the outer ear are supposed to be the same pressure. But if you go in an airplane, for example, and the atmospheric pressure changes, mm -hmm. it puts pressure on the middle ear that causes pain. So the, what you want to do is try to pop open the tube that connects the throat to the middle ear. It's called the eustachian tube. Right. So by yawning, very simple, just yawn, it's going to pop it right open and it equalizes the pressures. Another thing that some people try to do, which I would not recommend, a lot of people 
squeeze their nostrils mm -hmm. and then blow. Why don't you want to do that? If you do it too hard, you can force fluid up into the middle ear and Ooh. that can be damaging. Okay. So just do it gently or, or yawn. And, and finally, if you feel like you're going to faint, uh, what's going on with the body there and how can you control that? If you feel like you're going to faint, which happens if you're standing in the subway too long, if you get too hot, your blood pressure goes down. So what you want to do is cross your legs, squeeze your thighs and contract your abdomen and that forces the blood up into the heart and the head. It raises the blood pressure and the fainting spell sensation passes. All right, Dr. Peterson, thanks so much. Thanks, Al. Some great advice. We appreciate that.